Halo Infinite Projectile versus Hitscan Weaponry. What are the pros and cons and which one should 343 go for when it comes to making Halo Infinite? Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand the discussion. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you a gameplay commentary today. We're talking about the difference between Hitscan and Projectile Weaponry. Which one do you think would work best in Halo Infinite? Leave it in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. Like, I like these kind of discussion videos. Please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. If you're new to the channel or want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, please make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we all know sub boxes can be kind of weird at times. Let's get right into the video here. The projectile versus hit scan. If you don't know what I'm talking about, essentially we're talking about the precision weapons in Halo and how they should hit when it comes to hit registration. Do you have to lead your shots and kind of time it properly like you do in CE or Halo 3? Or do you just aim right at the guy's head and it should hit like it does in Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 4, and Halo 5? Now Halo has always had a mix of projectile and hit scan weaponry. Say for example, the rocket launcher has always been a projectile weapon where you have to lead your shots wherever someone's going. We're saying Halo 5, like right now, wherever you aim the Magnum, that's where it's going to hit. Now throughout the Halo franchise, there has been uh, going back and forth between hit scan and projectile weapons when it comes to your precision weaponry. And so in this video, what I'm talking about is why I think some of these features can be either integrated seamlessly or brought in together or just omitted completely depending on how you do your balancing i think a perfect example of hit detection comparisons would have to be like halo 5 when you play the high hang em high remake in that game say with like the ce pistol compared to halo 1 ce pistol where uh in that map in hang em high you can actually kind of move around a lot more due to the projectile weaponry though in halo 5 you're basically have people sniping each other with pistols across each base, which really makes the gameplay not that fun as you can't really move around a whole lot. That's the difference between projectile and hit scan, how it can directly affect the gameplay, where you can have the exact same map, exact same weapons, but then the gameplay is completely different just due to hit detection. Let's give you the pros first of each one. So the pros of projectile. I think the biggest pro of projectile weaponry for, let's say, the battle rifle, for example, is that it adds that extra level of skill and gives the players who are more dedicated, more familiar with the mechanics of the game, a little bit more of an advantage. Being able to know exactly how far to lead your shots when it comes to aiming in Halo 3 is absolutely crucial. You'll see the biggest example of this is in Big Team Battle where the lines of sight are much longer than say like your typical arena maps or sometimes you have to completely aim off of the guy you're trying to shoot at just to make sure the bullets hit correctly. But also the pros when it comes to hit scan is that I do find it much more reliable when it comes to hit detection and it's also very easy to understand. You see the guy? you aim at them, you hit them. Now the issue with both of these hit detection systems is that with projectile, things can be feel rather inconsistent and frustrating. Like a lot of times when I'm playing Halo 3, I'm like, how did I not get that to be a four shot? How much damage is this guy, that did I actually deal on this guy? I'm not totally sure. Where the issue with hit scan is that you have the ability to completely laser people across the map depending on your weapon spread. Which they did take that into consideration when it comes to Halo 5. Obviously, if you're using the Magnum at extremely long ranges, like I say in the like war zone, your, your shots will be rather random and inconsistent due to the, the weapon's spread. But they, with it being hit scan, you obviously don't want it to have it act like a damn sniper rifle. So in this video, I feel like I can be able to give you an example of how we can maybe hybrid some of these systems that have been put throughout Halo to make Halo Infinite something really special. And I think it could be a great experience because I feel like that's what the kind of feel is going to be with the Halo Infinite. It's going to be a hybrid of your classic feels with your modern feels when it comes to playing Halo. Because I will say that the modern Halos, the hit detection, the movement and things like that feel great. I love how it plays where the classic games probably felt a little bit more skill based on your gun play specifically rather than just being able to outmaneuver people a lot of times like you can in Halo 5. So a major thing to take in consideration beyond just the, how the hit detection works, but also what are the hit detection, basically is what I'm saying is the hitboxes in the game. 
Uh, a lot of times, there's been some variation and changes when it comes to the hitboxes in Halo. I've kind of noticed that ever since uh, Reach and later that the hitboxes have been feeling a little bit more forgiving when it, to the player when it comes to hit detection. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. A lot of times I feel like with Halo 3 the hit detection can be a little unfavorable to the player where I feel like it's a little too difficult when you're trying to, for the casual player when you're playing on console especially. Also another thing of bullet magnetism basically where it's giving you the benefit of the doubt when it comes to your hit detection. It's like yeah maybe your red reticle range might be off a little bit or you might not be complete on them but since you're close enough it gives you the bullet detection hit detection anyways. Obviously tweaking things like red reticle range which increases your bullet magnetism and aim assist will definitely take into consideration what the hit detection feels like in the game. So what I want to do next is show you guys some examples across different Halo games of how essentially the forgiveness of Halo's hit detection has been. Okay guys, so right here we have Halo 2 for you. Now like I said before, this is, is a hit scan weapon battle rifle. So basically wherever you're aiming the gun, that's where the bolts are going to go. So if you can check out the clips right here, I put in the custom games right here, testing out the blue reticle range right here. You can see that nothing's hitting, not, nothing at all right there. I aim in a little bit as well, just kind of show you what the bat bullet magnetism is like in Halo 2. And there's some favorable shots, but I think it's more just kind of the recoil trying to get in the way of things. And then we, here we have the red reticle range. You can see how the shots are hitting completely on the character because that's obviously where the maximum amount of bullet magnetism and aim assist takes into consideration right there. But of course, I'm trying to test out exactly how close you can be to get the full red reticle range. And it looks like it's still making hit detection just fine. Now we're here, we're going to be testing out the same thing, but in Halo 3 to kind of show you some comparisons right here, the differences right here. So you can see I'm trying to aim out just far out, just beyond red reticle range. And you can still see there's still a little bit of bullet magnetism when it comes to Halo 3, uh, but not as much. Definitely not as much as a little bit more forgiving, I'd say, when it comes to Halo 2 Classic. As you can see, like right here, I'm right outside red reticle range, and some of them are still actually hitting, but I think it's more... Possibly due to the uh, you know recoil of the weapon kind of j jingling the uh, like as you call it that the a, 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 the reticle right there right here you see red reticle range right there you can see that the bullet magnetism and hit detection is at its best when you zoom straight in it's not red at all right there so it's a kind of can take in consideration when it comes to your EDS I guess you can want to call it uh, hit detection right there but you can see like right here like I'm aiming at his head basically and I took put four shots in the guy don't get the kill. So sometimes it can be kind of tricky to tell exactly how much damage you do deal on a player, especially in Halo 3. Now does this mean that it's bad? Not necessarily, it's just something a little different, but personally I would like a little bit more feedback or at least a little bit more sense of consistency when it comes to hit detection in Halo. Now let's hop over to Halo 4 right here. Now I feel like this game is probably the most um, perfect example of very generous hit detection I'd find in this game. And uh, we'll show you some examples right here. So I'm going to test out the non-red reticle range right there. You can see the shots are still hitting right there. Rather consistently, actually, right there. Um, not a full three-round burst with a battle rifle, but, you know, pretty good hit detection right there. I'm definitely not, you know, I'm not aiming at the guy really at all, but the shots are still counting due to the bullet magnetism. You can see how with it's a very delicate web when it comes to... Uh, your hit detection, your hit scanner projectile weaponry, your bullet magnetism, and your hit boxes when it comes to the game. It gives you that feeling of getting good hit detection. As you can see right here, now I'm right, testing out the red relic range. Of course, it hits. So obviously with the later Halo games, they add in a thing of hit markers. Very much like common you see in very many shooters nowadays. Now, I do find a lot of hit markers to be rather redundant in Halo. But like say like in Halo 5, you have hit marker grenades and you also have hit markers on weapon shots. Now with weapon shots, yeah, it's kind of fine because it's rather redundant UI in the game. And it does feel like it breaks the immersion a little bit when you're playing the game. But you know, it is what it is right there. A lot of people kind of find it as a standard in your games. Where in grenade hit markers, I don't think they belong in the game at all. But that's because I think it provides too much information to the player with so little risk of just losing your grenades. And so what I like to see, maybe possibly, maybe some kind of hybrid of these systems are here. Maybe if you go with projectile weaponry, like you do in Halo 3 for that battle rifle, but maybe add hit markers in the game so you can kind of tell how many bullets you're hitting on them. That's what they did with the Halo 5 battle rifle, where you can see three distinct hit markers when it comes to you know, your hit detection right there so you can tell how many bullets you landed on a player. So if you're going to go with projectile weaponry or precision, I think hit markers would probably be something you'd much 
you know, it would be a much needed thing. Where if you go with hit scan weaponry, I feel like you don't need hit markers at all, and I do feel that like basically like the way it was in Halo 2, where it can be kind of generous at times, but it's, you know, it's rather you know unforgiving where you actually have to be directly on the player's head. To make those shots much like in Halo 3 where they had to be completely on the guy's head say with a sniper rifle or time it absolutely perfectly with your projectile weapon you have to be able to lead your shots to actually really hit them because it's rather unforgiving in Halo 3 when it comes to a sniper rifle I feel like it's a little too difficult or sometimes I feel like in the Halo 5 it's a little too forgiving also with it being an arena shooter for the most part like your 44 gameplay I feel like that probably would work best and also probably more favorable to the general public if you use hit scan weaponry because I can imagine with a new player going into Halo 3 not knowing the difference between projectile weapons and hit scan weapons that uh, it'd be rather frustrating but like I put my curse on the guy I'm shooting him how come my balls are not connecting this seems really weird or if you're using Halo 5 system of precision weapons where it's hit scan that it just makes a little bit more sense and also the ranges that you're fighting in are much closer and so then it takes in consideration that uh, I think it's more favorable to new players when you use hit scan weaponry rather than projectile but also projectile does give you the extra layer of skill where the person who takes the time learns how to shoot the weapons and actually do a lot better in the game we're kind of looping back around here where I feel like hit scan's a little more simple, a, little more, a lot more straightforward and easy to understand and it's much more consistent when it comes to your hit detection. Though if you're going to be using hit scan, you have to be rather, uh, string, uh, rather strict on your hit detection and bullet magnetism as it makes the gunplay easier to do. But if you're going to go with projectile, maybe be a little bit more generous on the hitboxes and your bullet magnetism in your red reticle range while also giving possibly hit markers to give players better feedback on understanding how much damage was dealt. Those are my thoughts on projectile versus hit scan when it comes to Halo Infinite. Ultimately, it's up to 342 to decide what they're going to do with this game, but I will say there is this delicate web, interconnected web basically of uh, hitboxes, magnetism, hit detection when it comes to project projectile or hit scan and ways to balance it out and way to give players a good feedback between uh, you know how much damage has been dealt to a player and also just their weapon ballistics as a whole how fast do the bullets travel through the air so if you guys like these more analytical topic videos please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on projectile versus hit scan i do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well if you get enough comments maybe make this into a reply video we'll see if you're new to the channel we'll see up to date with anything halo related or Halo Infinite related as well, make sure to tap subscribe with the bell, as we all know some boxes can be kind of weird at times. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.